church. Would you please stand with me as we sing our starting song? Um, if the spirit moves you to start clapping, please join with us. Um, let's worship our Lord this morning.
rapping is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me.
stay standing for a minute. In Mark chapter 11, Jesus said, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. And so because of those words from Jesus, um, we're very convicted and we believe that part of church is supposed to be prayer. And so church is about you. It's about me. It's about connecting. It's about friendship. It's about worship and teaching and connecting with God. And part of that is prayer. And so I want to pray this morning. Um, we take time in all of our services to do something that we call praying the 210. And that's where we just pause to pray specifically for the community around us, the businesses, the people, the first responders, the individuals. But I want to broaden this a little bit today. And I want to pray on Jesus' words that, that his house would be a house of prayer for all the nations. And I want to pray the Lord's Prayer into the nations. And I'll start big and then I'll shrink it down to you and me and where we live. But in, in Luke chapter 11, Jesus was asked by his followers, how do we pray? Teach us to pray. And this is what Jesus gave them. He said, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread 
Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. So let's, let's take the Lord's Prayer. It's the perfect prayer. All by itself, it's, it's the perfect way to pray. It can also be amplified to spend hours in prayer, and it can be studied for a lifetime. But let's pray the Lord's Prayer, and let's, let's start from the, the largest big picture that we have. And so, God, we pray today that your kingdom would come. We pray that your agenda would be served and done in our world. God, in both of the hemispheres, in all seven of the continents, in the 190 plus nations of the world, God, in every nation of the world, we pray that your will would be done. We pray that your agenda would be served. God, we pray it in our country. We pray it in the United States. We pray it in uh, Israel. We pray it in the conflict that's happening in Israel, but both the Israeli side and the Palestinian side. God, we pray it into Ukraine and Russia and Cambodia and Mexico and Pakistan and China. We pray it into Western Europe and Eastern Europe and Africa and South America and Central America. God, we pray that your agenda would be done in the world. God, we pray it would be done in every nation, in every county, in territory, in region, and city, and neighborhood, and community, and household, and individual. God, we pray it into government, business, education, science, arts and media, religion, family. We pray it into um, every aspect of our world today. God, we pray that your agenda would be complete. We pray that your desire and your plan would be done. We pray that wars would cease, that conflict would end, that, that, that healing would occur and life would occur. God, we pray it into Claremont and Laverne and Montclair and Upland and Azusa and Glendora and Chino. God, we pray that in this part of California, you would make this a thin place where it's easy, Lord, spiritually for people to connect with you and sense something from you. We pray it, Lord, into the, the tiniest children in this church, into the oldest senior citizens in this church and everybody in between. God, we need you. And Lord, our faith is not in our faith. Our faith is not in our ability to hold on to you. Lord, our faith today is in your ability to hold on to us. So we pray that your agenda would be done. We pray for daily bread and all that that means. We pray for forgiveness and the ability to forgive. And we pray that you would break every bit of spiritual warfare out of our lives, out of our families, out of our region. God, thank you for teaching us to pray. Thank you for making space for all the nations of the world to know God and be known by God. Lord, we love you. Bless Hope City Church, every person who's visiting today, every person who's online, people who have built this place. God, bless them. We need you. We love you. We appreciate you. Amen. Amen. Hey, I'm so glad that you're all here today. I feel like we have some children that are ready to sprint to their classes, so why don't I let that happen? Kids, you can be dismissed to your classes. Everybody else, would you maybe just take a minute or two and say hi to the person next to you and welcome them to Hope this morning?
All right, welcome to Hope. So glad you're all here. Everyone who's online, welcome. I know we have people in the tent on this frigid spring morning, but you're all welcome here. I'm so happy that you're with us. Uh, Jennifer Sweeney, how's your son doing up here? Doesn't, isn't he doing a great job? I love Nate's voice. So, so special, so talented. You all would never know this, and I don't even know if I'm supposed to say this, but he's also part of, a, of like a heavy metal band. Like he, so he's so gentle and just this crooning, sweet voice, and he also is, is pretty, pretty um, diverse in his musical abilities, and no, we're, we're lucky to have him. We've got a lot of very talented people. Speaking of things that I don't know if I should say, um, <laughs> Angie, are things going well with Dom and the family, and so... The ch church is fun, isn't it? You get to, you have the boyfriends that visit and come to church with the parents and no, we have a few announcements to share with you. Um, we recently had a team uh, from this church go down to Ensenada, Mexico. There's two different ministries that we support in Mexico and they, they, they had a, an incredible experience uh, in fact, uh, well, I'll have a couple of them come up and, and tell you about it. Ollie and Amy Weiler are going to come up, and they'll tell you a little bit about the trip. But I want to show you just a, a quick two-minute uh, slideshow, just so you see some of the images. We had a good, diverse range of ages on this trip. We had some children. We had some grandparents. We had people in between. And just want to give you a visual of what they did. And then um, as soon as this ends, um, Amy and Ollie can come up and talk to us about it. We'll be doing another one of these trips in November. And that, that trip is already pretty much full. But if there's a few of you that want to jump into it, there might still be room. But I'm, I'm so grateful for those of you that were willing to take vacation time and go down and serve in Mexico. So let's roll the, the video, and then you guys are up. Good morning. Um, this is my wife, Amy. I'm Ollie, as Chris has, has told you about. Um, so the trip was fantastic. Uh, obviously, you see from the pictures, we had a great time. Um, I got to play with a lot of the kids. There was a lot of hard work, too, but uh, that, was, that was part of the, part of the plan. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about was um, uh, how I got onto this trip. One of the uh, questions on the, the application is, why do you want to go? And my response was, I don't want to go. <laughs> it, was, um, it was something that God had led me to do. And I was nervous. I'll be honest with you. I, I've never been to Mexico. This was my first mission trip. It was, 
I was, yeah, a little shaky. But um, I, felt, I felt like I was supposed to go. So turns out after the first day of hard work, we uh, did, um, uh, one of the, the leaders had told or had asked if there's anything else that we should be doing. And one of the directors of the uh, facility that we were at asked, um, is there anybody on your team that knows about technology? Well, I have 35 years of information technology experience. I'm thinking, that's why you want me to go. <laughs> OK. So um, it, still, I, it didn't take me very long to do what they asked me to do. It was installing a security system. It's not a big deal. But it was one of those things like, this is, this is God's hand. And I believe that this happened to everyone. Um, I think the entire team definitely felt like they, uh, they got something out of it. I can tell you for sure there were no slackers in the group. Everybody worked really hard. Um, and it was a fantastic time. That security system had been in a box for almost two years. So it was really a blessing for him to be able to do that for him. them. Um, we stayed in this beautiful home on the beach, as you saw one of the pictures. So it was a really great way to start the day. Very serene, very peaceful, and just kind of got us in that right mindset. We had prayer time and devotional time with our team, so we got to know each other. As you saw in the group uh, or in the pictures, we had all ages, all abilities. Everybody was able to um, contribute, like you said. Uh, one of the things that blessed me was I you saw that picture of the women all sitting at a table. We were doing our nails. Um, that was in charge of that. And I did not want to do it when it came time. I was tired. I was sunburned. <laughs> I was like, oh, God, really? Do I have to do this now? I don't know the language. But God, I mean, he just, he got me through it. He gave me the energy. He gave us a really great time. Everybody enjoyed that time together. Um, they were laughing. The language didn't matter that much. There was enough, um, or as, enough people that knew the English that could help us all get through it together. Um, what else do we want to say? Um, I think that pretty much covers it. Yeah, I mean, as you saw, I think I would encourage anybody that's considering going on a missions trip to go. Uh, whether it's short-term, long-term, it really it blessed us more than I think it blessed them. Um, but at the same time, what we what it's we were doing seemed kind of tedious to us. I mean, you saw we were folding clothes. Well, that helped them because then they can do their ministry. Um, so it just, yeah, I don't know. I think that's it, right? Yeah, that's All right. It. Thank you. <laughs>
So anytime um, the, the women go away or the men go away for these weekend retreats, it's a different dynamic. And even though it's not overnight and even though it's on this campus, it's still a way of pulling away from life, focusing in on worship, friendships, teaching. It's going to be absolutely dynamic. And our women's ministry is very excellent in the sense that the food's going to be amazing, the preparation is amazing, the decor will be amazing. So if we have any ladies still that haven't signed up, we want you, we need you, and it's this week, and you can um, get information at the Info Hub. And then also, I just want to tell you one more thing before we move into the teaching. Um, we're going to be helping host an event in Claremont for the National Day of Prayer this year. Um, we often do something. We did it in Laverne for years. We've done it in different cities. And this year, uh, the city of Claremont um, gave uh, Pastor Don permission to host the National Day of Prayer in Memorial Park, which is pretty awesome. So the main uh, primary park in Claremont, we're partnering with Christian Development Center. Pastor Donald Rucker will be one of the speakers at the event. But I just want to get that on your radar. I think it's on May 2nd, and we'll be doing it during the noon hour. And of course, I know a lot of you are working, but if you can break away, it'll be a powerful time to pray for our country. So with that... Um, Isaiah Granados has been very busy lately. If you know Isaiah, he's one of our pastors here. He's been very busy working with the youth, with Christina, starting a young adults group here at the church, overseeing the worship program now that we've, we're, we've, um, we've you know, moved on from Amanda with her being um, at her new church, although I think she's coming back for part of the worship for a women's retreat, which will be pretty special. But Isaiah's had a lot on his plate, so he hasn't preached on a Sunday morning in a while, and I have missed it. I've missed his humor and his vulnerability and his insight from Scripture, and today is his birthday. So I thought, what a... Be what a <laughs> I thought, what a great way to celebrate. We'll just add stress and pressure and busyness to his plate. But man, Isaiah, we love you so much. You're a, he's a fantastic communicator if you haven't heard him preach. But would you welcome um, Isaiah Granados? I mean, I had nothing to do with my birth, so I mean, <laughs> thank my parents, I guess. <laughs> yeah, uh, it is good to be with all of you today. Thank you so much for uh, singing the song that Chris hates. Uh, so <laughs> um, it actually sounded pretty good. I don't know who started that, but good job. Well, I am excited to be with all of you today. Thank you so much for uh, just, uh, yeah, being here. For If you're online or outside in this room, uh, I truly appreciate uh, you tuning in with us today. I am uh, I'm excited because I'm going to be continuing our series called Going, Going, Gone, where we're discussing the, the Great Commission. And I'm going to cut right to the chase from the very beginning and ask you this question. How many of, any, of you in here know that you have an assignment due? All right, three of you, sweet. Now, okay, so yes, my assignment picture's up there. Some of you are like, oh, wait, wait a second, like, I better not have an assignment. I bet I've been done with school for a while, like, I don't need another assignment. And for some of you, like me, like, in college, it's kind of still triggering a little bit, like, you know, I just, a little bit of PTSD, you know, you wake up late in a panic, you had three months to work on an assignment, you did nothing, and you wake up with this, what Mike Simpson calls the panic monster. Now, it looks like a nice little cute monster here. But it, in, in the reality, the panic monster is this rush of fear that, that you know, that this panic of overwhelming you and forcing you to kind of contemplate all these different types of options. Like, you know, do I, do I run away in this moment from this assignment? Do I, do I fake sudden heart failure from this assignment? Do I, or do I just bury my head back underneath the pillow and go back to sleep? You know, it's all those kinds of things that we that kind of rush in when you think of an assignment that is due. But when I ask you that question, I don't mean the sort of an assignment, that sort of an assignment. I, I mean one that's way more important, one that's assigned from God. Now, some of you are like, does that involve a seven-day Caribbean trip? Like, <laughs> or maybe, maybe is it 
is it a Hawaiian kind of assignment? Like, I would really like those kind of assignments. No, at least I don't think it is for most of you. But, but I, I, when I, when I, want, I want you to do me just a, for just a favor, just one second, just hold on to that thought about this idea of an assignment, and I'm going to ask you another question. What in your life has the greatest influence? What in your life has the greatest influence on you? Maybe it's music. Maybe it's money. Maybe it's your friends. Maybe it's a girl you like. Maybe it's your spouse. Because whether or not you are aware of it, you are being influenced in some way all the time. Whether it's a conversation about the newest Netflix series you're watching or that everyone's talking about or new places to eat or whether or not you should buy that thing on that TikTok shop that you don't really think you should buy, but you're like, do people really buy things from the TikTok shop? I mean, so, but everywhere we go, everywhere we go, advertisements, they're, 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 they're constantly vying for our attention. Marketing spots, it makes you feel like, gosh, it's overwhelming that there's so much of it, so much influence we're saturated with, with these, these, these types of companies trying to com- pull for you know, our attention. And, and I don't know if you know that, you know, there, there's this thing called influencers. Have you guys heard of this, you know, for those that are under 40? Uh, yeah, influencers, yes. Um, influencers, if you don't know, are people who have the ability to affect the opinion of a large pool of people regarding particular topics, and, and they use their influence to promote brands, to products, services, um, and and they'll collaborate with these companies to do that. These people are sometimes called vloggers, Instagrammers, YouTubers, and TikTokers. And if if you're on any of these platforms, you have definitely have seen these people. You've probably been influenced by them to to purchase that towel that apparently drives up like five cars and you don't ever have to wring it out, or that snack that everyone has, and you're like, should I buy this? we, we live in a world of influencers, and, and, and guess what? You are too. Like, you are no different. You are, an influ- you are influencing someone whether you like it or not, whether they like it or not. You know, some of you may have been influenced by me to love the Dodgers or to love the Kansas City Chiefs or to really love ice cream because I really do love ice cream. Uh, and to that I say you're welcome. But maybe, maybe... <laughs> You're, you're, you are influential with your words. But if you're not influential with your words, maybe you're influential with your actions. Now, I don't mean to scare some of you, especially parents and grandparents who have students in our student ministry. Um, I'm going to let you in on a little secret because um, you are very influential on them. Your influence is powerfully on display in the lives of those students that we work with all the time. Uh, And good or bad, and you just can't help it, you are influencing them. And you may not like to think that you have that sort of influence, but you do. And and there's no greater influence that we have, that you and I have, than in our measure. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. If you've been with us for some some time now, you know that here at Hope, we, we, we use this language of measure to, to refer to the sphere of influence that we have in our life. Like this, and this language is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 10, <clears throat> and I'm going to go there right now. Look at, we're going to look at verse 13. I'm not going to unpack the whole passage here, um, but I want to just kind of reference it real quick. <clears throat> it says this, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 But we will not boast beyond our measure, but within the measure of the domain which God assigned to us as a measure to reach even as far as you. Your measure is the space where where you have influence, your workplace, your closest relationships, the places that you frequent often, groups, teams that you're a part of. This is your measure. Now, it looks very different from my measure, but this is the measure into which we are assigned to. And I have a different assignment than you do. Like for me, it's all of you. 
well, maybe not all of you, but some of you. I, I, you know, it's definitely some of you. It's Azusa Pacific University. It's Altaloma High School, where my son goes to school. It's the Jasper Elementary, where my daughter goes to school. It's, it's the softball team that I coach and baseball programs that I'm a part of. And some people at my gym, only some. And, and my next door neighbors that are around in my neighborhood, like those people are all part of my measure. And these are the people that God has assigned me to. And, and I don't know if you ever look at it like that, but, but that God called me to a domain, to a measured out space for me to be put on mission. So what is yours? That's the question that you have to wrestle with. I can't figure that out for you. You're going to have to ha- wrestle that out with God and, and, and evaluate your environment, your domain, your sphere of influence, because whether you like it or not, you're influencing them. Some of you may be like, well, okay, I'm out of here. I'm out. I don't like people. I don't want to do this. <clears throat> and to that, I say, same. Like, sometimes, yes, I feel the same way. Like, like, sometimes people are difficult, and sometimes people are annoying, and sometimes they're mean, and sometimes they give me a headache, and I, and I, want, I don't want to deal with that. And, and, I, and you know what? That doesn't mean that they're not assigned to me, though. And I want you to listen to this. Every single person who is a follower of Jesus, and I want, to, I want you just to, to lean in a little bit more. If that is you, then you've been assigned to your measure by God, and every measure is unique to each person. And that might seem like a very big task for you. I get it because I feel the same way. One that seems way too big for any one person to handle because it is way too big for any one person to handle, which is why we need all of you. It, it's, it, it's, the, the kingdom of God is a very, very big thing, one that we cannot get our minds wrapped around. It's more than any one person can handle, and it's why he's assigned you to yours and me to mine. And the struggle that I find often is, is that so many people who claim to follow Jesus, who believe that God so loved the world, we, like, we tend to settle for less than we can handle. And I, th- I think it's, we've set our sights a little too low. Like, I don't want to do it. That's uncomfortable. It's, it's too time-consuming. They're too difficult. I've said all those things. I felt all those things. And you know, and over the years, I've heard a lot of athletes, they'll say the phrase like, I'm no role model, like to justify their bad behavior or their bad influence on teenage, you know, teenagers and the, who are watching them and idolizing them. You've ever heard this before? Yeah. And, and I'm sorry to break it to them and I'm sorry to break it to us that whether we like it or not, whether they're a good role model or not, whether they're being a good influence or not, they, we are modeling something. We are representing someone or something, and we're influencing others whether we like it or not. So I think that we can just rest assured that we have influence whether you want to have it or not. So if that's the case, then, then we have to stop putting up these blinders, and we need to stop pretending that we don't have any influence. And we need to start embracing and, and taking those blinders off and embracing the place that God has put you and be the measure that your measure needs. Like, be, be the influence that your measure needs. So, what sort of influence are you then? What sort of influence are you supposed to have on your specific measure? Now, sometimes we can feel like, like we must be what we're not. Oh, I know this person. I know that person. First of all, you're not supposed to be them. Nor are you supposed to be any savior. You are not God. You're a terrible God. So don't do that, okay? (laughs) Don't be that. But don't be somebody else. Be you. God wants you to be you right where you are. God has placed you exactly where you are to be what he's made you to be. Not perfect, because there's no such thing, but you. And in my experience, the best thing that you can be to your measure, the people he's assigned you to, is to be something that everyone needs. You are called to be a blessing. Genesis chapter 12, you know this. It says, I will make you into a great nation. This is verse 2. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. From the time of Abraham, God's people have been called to be a blessing. 
And that and if we are God's people, then we are also called to be a blessing. Whether you like it or not, whether your arms are crossed and you're like, oh, I don't, what, I don't like that person. I don't like this situation. Doesn't matter. You are called to be a blessing. But what does that look like practically for all of us? Well, I think it's different for everyone, but there are some things that everyone needs that I believe will make an immediate impact and will allow for God to do his work in those that God has assigned us to. And we're going to find that in 1 Peter chapter 4. So if you have your Bible, you can turn there, um, but it'll also be up on the screen. And we're going to pick up in verse 8, okay? 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8. It says this, above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Okay. So there are several things here, but let's break it down, okay? His first few words say this, above all. I guess it's the first couple words. Above all, meaning over everything else of first importance, we must love each other deeply. Now, we can all agree that we have different gifts, right? Like we, we are uniquely designed. I think we probably can all admit that. Like some of you are really good cooks and chefs, and I'm really good at eating those things. Like I, very good, actually. Um, and it's obvious that we have different gifts. But, but, P, but Peter says here that the one way to be a blessing to our assignment, to our measure, is the one thing this church wants to be known for. Our mission at Hope City Church is to live by faith, to be known by love, and to be a voice of hope for our world. We are a church that wants to be known for love. This is the first way we are to be a blessing to the measure that we've been assigned to. We must love them deeply. We must, above all. And this looks different for you and I. Like, we all have different love languages. We've talked about that. I've talked about, you guys, are you familiar with my love languages? I think I've shared this before, right? And just in case you forgot, like, my, my, I have three love languages. One's touch, two is, is uh, affirmations, and three is touch me again. Like, I want, I, that's mine, okay? I don't know what yours is, but, but others feel loved by, by being helped through acts of service, and some feel loved by, like I said, the words of affirmation or encouragement. Others feel loved when they receive gifts. And others feel loved by putting away all distractions and spending some quality time with someone. But Peter goes on to say that the reason that we should show this deep love is that it has the power to do what? To cover a multitude of sins. What does that mean? Well, this is a reference to Proverbs 10, 12, which says this, hatred stirs up conflict, but love covers over all wrongs. Peter, who's writing this, is a man who understood the wrongs that he had in his life. From his early days in a boat with Jesus to the days of denial, he understood his wrongs, he understood his sins, he understood what it meant to feel like he letting somebody down. And as he journeyed with Jesus, these moments kept happening for him. And he denies Jesus and all these other things that maybe you're familiar a little bit with Peter. But Peter understood. He understood his multitude of sins. He did. He, for, he certainly did. But Peter also understood the great love of God that covered his multitude of sins. So much so that, that Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? And Peter's like, of course, of course I do, Lord. And Jesus is like, then, then do what I've called you to do. Feed my sheep. Jesus never gave up on him. Jesus, Jesus covered his multitude of sins and says, I still believe in you. I have still assigned you. I still called you. And you are called to feed my sheep. You are called to love them deeply. And Peter knew it. 
And Peter took up that call, and he understood his measure, and he understood his assignment. But the question is, do we know our measure and our assignment? You may not believe this, but many people in your measure do not feel worthy of this type of love. They don't feel like they deserve this type of forgiveness. It's not conversations that we always have. But there's an ache in the human soul that, that longs to feel like they belong, that longs to feel like they are truly loved. And they might tell you with their words, I don't need anybody else. Yes, they do. They do. And what they really need is a love that comes from God that's unconditional. And how can they experience that? They can experience it from you. You can share that unconditional love that you're wrestling with yourself to accept from God, but he's given it to you freely. Look at verse Peter 4, 9. This is the second way that we can be a blessing. It might even be more difficult for you than, than this first one. Verse 9 says, Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. I like that little <laughs> add on there. <laughs> Cheerfully share your, your home or the things that you have with people. Some of you are like, mm, I'm out. Like, I think I'm out on this one. I, I, don't, I don't cook. I don't have a home to invite people to. I'm not a very nice person sometimes. Um, grumbling's my spiritual gift. Uh, I, I find it interesting, though, that how, how quick we are to notice how unhospitable people are. Like, it's the first thing you notice at restaurants, a server. It's the first thing you notice at a hotel. And as I was exploring um, this concept, and I was thinking, but I never apply that to myself. The closest definition of what we have for hospitality, the one that I liked that I kind of arrived on, it's kind of long, but I'll try to break it down. Extending warmth, kindness, generosity towards guests, visitors, or even strangers, creating an environment that fosters genuine human connection and a sense of belonging. I love, I love this. I love this. You know why I love this? Because I have felt this. I've experienced this. I remember the first time I went to, to church as a young adult. I have never felt so much warmth and kindness and generosity from people. And don't, don't get me wrong. I was weirded out by that. I was really like, this is strange. Um, but I immediately felt that genuine human connection. I felt a sense of belonging before they even knew me. And I couldn't describe it back then, but that's exactly what I felt. And I remember the first day that I walked onto the Lutheran High School campus and, and into the doors of our church back in 2014. And my wife and I, Jessica, she, we both described this feeling of warmth, kindness, and generosity towards our family. And, and in minutes, we felt like this, this strong human connection with people we've never even met before, a sense of belonging. And I hope that that's been your experience here. I, I really do hope that's been your experience here. But if it has it, that's on us. This community is part of our measure. Like, I know it feels weird when people tell you to look around the room, but look around the room. <laughs> this is part of your measure. And we've been assigned to our measure to show warmth and kindness and generosity, and belonging to not just the ones that we like and are easy to love. I must do that for every person that God has called me to. And it can sometimes be inconvenient, like I said, and it can sometimes be messy, and, and I can sometimes not want to do it. But if God has done that for me, and he's loved me in my mess, and he's loved me in inconvenient ways, then he will provide the strength and the ability in my weakness to show others the hospitality that he's shown me. So the first way to be a blessing to our measure we've been assigned to is to love them deeply. The second way is to show them hospitality. And if you don't know, like, man, that's a lot of things. Like, just start with one. Just be warm, okay? Just be kind. That might be really difficult for you, but just do that one. Start there. Baby steps. The third way is to use your gifts. Use your gifts. 1 Peter 4.10 says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others 
as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. God has given you gifts. He's given us gifts. And those gifts were never meant to be used on you. They're supposed to be used on others. That's, what it, that's the definition of a gift. You're giving it away. <laughs> Not hoarding it for yourself. And I know that, oh, that feels weird, but that sometimes I do that. You know, we live in a world that's so focused on other people's talents. And like we, we watch shows, right? You know, and, and, and we, we forget that we've been given blessings and <laughs> blessed with a unique set of gifts and abilities to, that, that only you can offer. We watch talent shows and competitions, at least I do still. I know I'm one of those people. Um, and, and I'm often wowed by the talents of others, and yet we'll sit there. I'll sit there and wish, oh, man, I wish I could be more like them, or I wish I could have that, that gift. And we live in this world of entertainment, right? That's just our culture of being entertained. And I, I, I love being entertained, and I'm not against it, that part at all. But I think it's amazing to listen and watch super talented people at work. You know, I, I really do think it's a, it's a gift in that way. But what I'm not okay with is people not realizing that they're filled with those giftings too. Our world of comparison has paralyzed us. So when that happens, when, 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 that, when those things and those thoughts enter our mind, it, it, it stops us from moving forward to the point where there's then only a few exercising those gifts. And I, everyone has a, a gift set. You all have one. Your gifts, whatever that mix is for you, whatever was given to you, they were assigned to you by God. They've been given to you by God to bless your measure. And if you're not doing that, you, you're really just missing out on the call that God has for you for you, and, and really the blessing of being a blessing. God has placed you exactly where you are in a measured out space to be a cause and an influence and a resource and a conduit and a safe place for people to encounter the creator of the universe and come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. He's blessed us with gifts. And he's blessed us with gifts which sometimes we're not using. And I know, we don't, all, we don't see ourselves as anything special sometimes. But you are. God, God, had, God doesn't make mistakes. And he's chosen you too. And you may not feel like you're very u- useful, but you are. If you're willing to stop resisting, God will show you how. If you're willing to stop making excuses, God will reveal the ways. And it's probably time that we all stop fighting it. It's time to probably embrace what you have and start using it. So maybe you're supposed to be a blessing here. I don't know. Maybe you need to be that blessing at home in your neighborhood. Maybe you need to be that blessing on your team, your group, at your school, at your workplace. Maybe you need to stop making the excuses and hoping someone else you know, does whatever that you're supposed to be doing. I'm going to close. I'm going to invite the worship team back up, but I, I want you just to stay with me for a moment because I'm going to ask you to do something. If any of you are tracking with this, <clears throat> if you could admit that maybe you haven't been the blessing that, 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 to the measure that God has assigned you to, and I don't mean like good enough. I don't mean that. I mean like you're just not doing it at all. I want you to know that God loves you and you have to begin with this first that God has a deep love and affection for you. You know, I, I use this imagery often, like when, when, when little children are learning to walk. A good, kind parent, I mean, most parents, when they're trying to balance their legs and they're trying to walk a little bit and they fall to the ground, no one goes, get up! What are you doing, failure? And we sometimes view God's perspective on us like that. Like like he views us that way. (sighs) Big letdown. Told you to do that. God has a deep, deep love for his children. 
And he's like that father or mother who's going to pick up that child like, oh my goodness. Like, you stood. <laughs> like, you wobbled and held the table for a little bit, you know, like, and, and then you started taking your first step and we videoed it and like telling everybody. Now they're running, we have to chase them and I'm frustrated, but like, I, you know, like, <laughs> I, then they drive and then they move out of your house and this could be a good thing, but I guess, like, I know it's, analogy's breaking down, but I mean, it's, but God is, God is a loving God, and he loves you, and he's not disappointed in you, but he has called you, and he has given you an assignment to be what your measure needs. It says in 1 Peter 4.11, if anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength of God that he provides so that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. You may not feel like you have the strength. You might feel like your energy is very low, but that's okay. We don't do anything without God's strength anyway. He will provide everything you need. And if you're young and you feel like, what do I have to offer? Like, what am I supposed to give? Let me just say that you've, God's already been using you. And you've, all, you've been a blessing before you were born. But you also, have to, you also have to understand that you have a measure as well. You're called as well. You have an assignment too, to be that blessing to those in your sphere of influence. So don't ever second guess that. And if you're here and you feel like, oh man, I... I lived a long life. Like, how can I, how, what, what else can I give? I've, I don't have much this. I don't have much that. I'll tell you this. The most influential people in my life are 70 years and older. Some are gone. They, they've been the influential people in my life, and they still are. So don't ever second guess your gift and your blessing. We've been assigned to a measure that God has called us to. He's chosen you to be a blessing that others need so that some might come to know the great love of God. Would you uh, stand and pray with me? Let's pray. God, you, you are the giver of gifts. And you delight in your children. But we also, because we are your children, we have an assignment, a measured out space, a sphere of influence to be a blessing to those that you have in our life. God, we cannot do it on our own, which is why you provide the strength. So whatever excuse that we have in our mind, would you just remind us, God, that um, that you will provide all that we need. Help us to be more dependent upon you. And a lot of times I believe, God, that, that, that the place that we need to start is in a space of worship to be reminded that you love us, that you've carved out a space for us, and that in return, we open up our heart to you. God, you, you, are, you are the most amazing gift to us. And God, may we return that gift to others around us. God, as we sing and as we worship, as we dwell on the central thing that we must come back to, and that is, God, that you, that you are the center, that you're the reason we do anything so that we might be able to pour out blessings upon others. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. It didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought it. we have ears to hear it, and I'm sure we did, in Isaiah's playful and funny and very engaging personality and style, he just gave us the blueprint for the hope of the world. If every single follower of Jesus, because there's a lot of them in our world, I don't know if we all are in a place here where we've made that decision and we've taken that step? I hope so. I mean, every church service has people that are in different places with their faith. Some people are locked in and we believe it with all of our heart. Some people are struggling with it. Some people are asking questions and they're pursuing and that's so beautiful. But if every follower of Jesus on the planet realized that I am on assignment by God, those were powerful words at the beginning of his talk, that God has assigned us to a place. I'm on assignment by God. See, one of, one of the big tragedies that happen is when Christians compartmentalize their faith, when my faith is this little sliver of who I am here, but then this is the rest of my life over here. That's, that's where hypocrisy and scandal and weirdness and bad examples where all of that stuff happens. Um, we're on assignment, and this faith of ours is supposed to inform that assignment. And I love the fact that any of us can do this. Uh, my job isn't to convert every person in my measure. My job is to love. My job isn't to preach and change the thinking of every single person that I come in contact with. It's to be warm. 
It's to be kind. You know, my job isn't to change the world. It's to figure out my gifting and use that gift to the glory of God. In fact, I think we'll do something this week. Um, Karina Menjivar uh, gave our board a really wonderful spiritual gift inventory because we all know that we have that we have um, certain personality temperaments, and you have a Myers-Briggs handle, you have an Enneagram number, and we get into all of those conversations, but we also have gifts from the Holy Spirit. And I think what we'll do this week is I think we'll, in our weekly email, I'll send out a link to that test. And if it's been a while since you've looked at spiritual gift inventories to figure out what is my gift and how am I uniquely wired in a ministry setting, I think that'll be really helpful. But But um, what what, what a beautiful message today. Tomorrow morning when we wake up, we're stepping into our assignment. You know, some people agonize. What am I supposed to do with my life? What's God's calling on my life? What's my purpose? We just heard it. Show up, be you, love people, serve others, and use your gifts. And I I don't know if you, I, I caught a pretty strong undercurrent in Isaiah's message today. He said this several times in different ways. He said, you be you. He even said, quit fighting who you are. Do do you ever struggle with your personality? Do you ever struggle? Why am I so intense? Why aren't I funnier? Well, why do I get so easily hurt in my feelings? Why am I so quiet? Why am I so loud? Um, you, You are the way you are because of why you are. God gifted you the way you are because of what he wanted to do with your life. So you be you where God assigned you, and that will get the job done. You know, somebody, somebody said, if, if, you, if you don't know what to do, do the next right thing. Do the next right thing in the spot where he's planted you through your unique makeup to the glory of God, and that's the hope of the world. You know, we, we, we look at news feeds that are so overwhelming, and You know, the situation happening in Israel, um, in Iran, just jumped into the mix. And so there's always something overwhelming happening. And what am I supposed to do about that? Show up tomorrow, love people, serve, pray, trust God, do our part. And that's the hope of the world. So I'd I'd like to end this morning doing something specific. Um, You know, in the scripture, when somebody was commissioned to an office or or commissioned to a ministry, they would do something that we call the laying on of hands. And we do this all the time. When you pray for somebody, you just naturally put your arm around their shoulder or put your hand on their their chest and pray for them. Would you mind putting your hand over your own heart this morning? Can I just end our morning with a commissioning prayer? Because you're a minister. You've been assigned to a measure. So in our conversations with each other, we could start adding the question, how's your ministry? How's your measure? In fact, my little accountability group meets tomorrow night, and that's a good question for the guys in my group. How's your measure? How's your ministry? So I want to pray a commissioning prayer, and with your own hand on you, we're we're asking God to, 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 to release that power of the laying on of hands and the commissioning. Jesus, send us into our measure tomorrow, today, when we leave this place. Help us to love more. Help us to care more. Help us to be at peace with who you've created us to be and help us to give our lives away for the good of others. So God, in the same way that people are commissioned when they're being set into a specific ministry assignment, would you commission us to that spot where you've placed us? Lord, you may move us. You may expand us. You may move us from one one place to another or one measure of influence to a greater measure. But Lord, you've given us what we have now. Lord, you've given this church, this assignment, this spot. Let us be faithful. So, Lord, anoint us, empower us. And, Lord, for any person here who is maybe asking questions and exploring faith, oh, God, encounter them and woo them and draw them and let them find the purpose for their existence in you. And then... um, Just one more thought. I loved what Isaiah said at the end about this church is part of your measure. I thought that was so good. I'm so glad that you said that because, you know, churches never become great unless a lot of people want them to be. Um, Churches never, never reach a community unless a whole lot of people say, this is my church. A church will never be warm and loving and caring just because a few select people are. You can't, you can't point to Richard or Rosemary or Denny or Selma and say, that's why we have a loving church. No, we have some loving people in them. A loving church is made up of a loving 
church. So I would love for you to wrestle with that. And, and let, let's make this church successful. And that means let's make it look like Jesus. And let's love and bless and serve the people around us in our uniqueness. And then we'll see where God takes us. So Isaiah, thank you so much. Happy birthday, my friend. We love you. I'll let you guys be dismissed. Ladies, if you still need to sign up for a retreat, we have a couple spots left, and you can do that at the Info Hub. Have a great day. We're going to play out the last chorus.